Hello, everyone. This is a definite integration person based on definite integral limitizer sum, infinite limitizer sum. Asked in J advanced 2013, one or more than one. The speciality of this question is even though the students have solved the question, but at the final, many people may commit the mistake in choosing the options. That is lack of the basic concepts. So here you see, of course, we can solve the question, but at the end, at the final, we must see that what are the possible values of here. So before we discuss this question, what we need is limit n tends to infinity, sigma r equal to 1 to n, 1 by n into f of r by n. We will write this expression as integral 0 to 1. In place of 1 by x, we write dx. And in place of r by x, we write x. Here we will write dx. So this is simply f of x dx. We will use this concept. Limit n tends to infinity, sigma r equal to 1 to n. Here 1 by n is there into f of r by n. This model is very, very important with respect to j main as well as j advanced. So now you see. So here, this is the question. Limit n tends to infinity, some expression they have given equal to 1 by 60. And uh, they are asking, the possible values of A. Okay. So now, what we have to do is, I'll just rewrite this equation. Or I'll separate this, I can simplify first. Okay. So limit n tends to infinity here 1 power a, 1 power a plus 2 to the power of a plus 3 to the power of a plus and so on plus n to the power of a. Here we divide by n to the power of a plus 1. You will understand that why I am dividing n power a plus 1 and multiplying by n power a plus 1. Whole by n plus 1 power a minus 1. Bracket begins. Here you see this is n a, n a, n a. So n a, n a, n a is added n times. Okay, so that is n times of n a plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus and so on up to n. Given that this is equal to 1 by 60. Well, now, <clears throat> so what we have to do is Again, I'll write one more step. Limit n tends to infinity. Okay. So I will take this expression as some p. This expression as some p. Okay. So I'll write that expression as taking p. Or limit n tends to infinity. 1 power a plus 2 to the power of a plus 3 power a, plus and so on, plus n to the power of a, whole by n to the power of a plus 1. 
this is one limit in two limit n tends to infinity okay so here this n to the power of a plus one we write here n to the power of a plus one whole by in this i will take one n common so here n to the power of a minus one after taking one n out of the bracket n plus one so we will have one plus one by n power a minus one into this is n square a plus 1 plus 2 plus 3 and so on up to n sum of first n natural numbers that is n into n plus 1 by 2 equal to given as 1 by 60. So this step is over. Now instead of here this now assume this value is p this is some value p okay and assume this value is some q we will evaluate separately p and q so now first we'll evaluate q so here the q value is q equal to limit n tends to infinity n power a plus 1 by n to the power of a minus 1. Okay. Here you see as n tends to infinity this becomes 0. So I can write directly that is 1 to the power of a minus 1. Here you take 1 n square comma n square into here a plus 1 plus 1 by n whole by 2. Now you see here n square we have n to the power of a minus 1. Together the exponent will be a plus 1. So this can be cancelled together. Right? So this is equal to as n tends to infinity, 1 by n tends to 0. So you will get 1 by a plus 1 by 2. This is equal to 2 by 2a plus 1. So we got the value of q. Now, where we will use So till now, I didn't use this concept, this one, okay? So now we will use that concept here in evaluating P. So P equal to, P equal to, now you see this one, limit n tends to infinity. I will write 1 by n outside. So here, 1 by n outside. Now, 1 n power a is left. So you split each term that this is 1 by n power a plus 2 by n power a plus and so on. At last, n by n power a. This I will write in the format of sigma limit n tends to infinity 1 by n. This is 1 by n power a, 2 by n power a. So you can write in sigma format that sigma r by n power a. So here r equal to 1 to n. So exactly we got in the form of 1 by n into f of r by n. Therefore p equal to 
it becomes now integral 0 to 1. In place of r by n, you write x. So this is x to the power of a dx. In place of 1 by n, you write x. And remaining limit enters to infinity, sigma r equal to 1 to n, you write integral 0 to 1, only when n is there. So this is quite simple, definite integration. x to the power of a plus 1, whole by a plus 1. Now substituting the limits, substitute the upper limit 1, so it becomes 1 by a plus 1 minus, now substitute 0, 0 power a plus 1 by a plus 1. This we will get 1 by a plus 1. Remember, 0 power anything is not 0. 0 power anything is not 0. Only 0 power a positive number is 0. Only 0 power a positive number is 0. So here 0 power a plus 1 is there. So here a plus 1 must be greater than 0. Therefore a is greater than minus 1. So many students will definitely forget this particular point. So the question asked intelligently based on this concept only. So we got that P equal to 1 by A plus 1. So now coming to the final question. Therefore, therefore, 1 by A plus 1, this is P into 2 by 2A plus 1 equal to they have given 1 by 60. So from this onwards, you can solve. So by, I'm just writing the direct values that A equal to 7, you can check it out. A equal 7 means this is 8 and this is 15, okay? So that becomes 1 by 60 or you will get a equal to minus 15 by 2. If you get, if you substitute a equal to minus 15 by 2, you will get the same only. So 1 by 60. Or let me check once. Sorry, this is not uh, minus 15, minus 17 by 2. So here you see, we got uh, two values, a equal to 7, a equal to minus 17 by 2, immediately will tick mark options, B is correct, but D, even though we got A value minus 17 by 2, but this is not correct because here when we are applying this concept, this is the main concept that A must be greater than minus 1. So this is accepted and this is rejected. So this is the one of the beauty of this question. They have asked the question based on a simple observation. So this is rejected since a equal to minus 17 by 2 is not is less than minus 1. A value must be greater than minus 1. So, hence, only one option is correct, even though it is asked in one or more than one. So, only option B is correct. 